record this and we, we would just talk for about five, six minutes. We could talk about anything. I know I didn't get a chance to talk to you to get your input on the, uh, on the whole Will Smith situation. I know um, it seems like everybody's been talking about it. We've talked about it ad nauseum, so I'm pretty sure some people are tired of hearing about it, but I never really heard your, uh, um, what your opinion about the whole Will Smith situation was. I was a little taken back. I didn't believe at first that it was real, but after 48 hours and then re-looking at the video and listening to a couple people, I was like, wow, you know, he must really have a lot of things going on in his life that seemed like this derailed him from a mental point to where he just wasn't getting clear with it. He just ran off emotion. <laughs> but um, I, I did believe that um, it was more of his emotions when he looked at his wife because um, the camera didn't pick that up but you can tell that he laughed initially and I was like okay so he thought it was kind of funny so when Jada did her little look it seemed like he switched gears and then I still felt that you could have handled that backstage you didn't have to sit there and disrespect that man the way you did yeah yeah and yeah. There's much, much stuff that is going on in the world I actually, after a week's time, thought to myself, man, we got other stuff that's going on in the world. This is the main distraction. Why? Not why, but while other things like the world economy, they're talking about, are we ready for a new world order over in Dubai, having this big gathering about, are we ready for a new world order? You know, Klaus Schwab. So that, to me, that whole fiasco took away from what should have been discussed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, but I do believe that it, it, um, it was a good conversation to have. Obviously, I don't know if you got a chance to watch the stream with me and, uh, Stan and uh, Rick Angelica and Toy. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. It was called, um, was this called, um, Oscar, SmackDown, uh, Chivalry, or Thuggery. And um, uh, the reason why I thought it was good for us to have that conversation is because, you know, you get a front row seat of what it looks like when a man loves a woman and he's doing everything he can to uh, appease her and nothing seems to make her happy uh, until, you know, he he's pretty much prepared to put his his career in jeopardy and an attempt in trying to appease her. I mean, it, it's what it looks like when your spouse or your significant other is competing with you and is resentful of your success. And I know a lot of people felt sorry for Will Smith. I don't because Will Smith had a wife and he had a son and he chose to leave his wife and his son for um, Jada. And this was a woman who did not want to be married, did not, especially did not want to be married to him. And for you to leave your son and your wife to be with um, uh, this Jezebel, man, I, I mean, I, I just find it hard for me to feel sorry for you. But he does serve as an example um, for, for other men out there. Cause uh, it, it was disgraceful. I mean, I mean, you know, anyway, I, you know, I, I guess I'm one of those people that I don't see any justification in why he did what he did. Um, you know, standing out, we had this conversation at length. I see, saw no justification at all. And, um, me personally, she showed her true colors because she had every opportunity to stop him when he walked, uh, you know, when he was walking up on stage and after he slapped Chris Rock, she laughed. And then she laughed when Chris Rock said he smacked the shit out of me. He, she laughed. And uh, when Will came back to his, his um, seat and he was screaming out, yelling, uh, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth, she had an opportunity to calm him down. Um, at no point 
did she do that? And then after the fallout, she quickly distanced herself from him, saying that um, I don't know why Will did that. I I didn't I didn't want him to do that. I wish he didn't do that. Um, and uh, she said something else, but it seemed like she was trying to distance herself from him. So, um, so I thought that was good, but I I do agree with you that there are bigger issues that we need to to focus on. And I think you and I have been talking about these global plans and the the global reset for for the better part of maybe almost two and a half years now. You know what? After hearing what you just said, and no, I didn't get a chance to um, look at the footage that you and Jones did, and I'm going to go back and look it up. But I, I agree with everything you just said. And not saying that because of how eloquent you said it, but yeah, I, I recall in the media, in the tabloid, how she had said, you know, she shouldn't have married him. I recall someone on the panel sending a uh, Instagram about when on her, I think, 39th birthday, he went and did, like, I think, like a genealogy of her family. And mm-hmm. He did this, and she wasn't happy with it. And it's like, everything you said, 100. He's doing all he can to appease her, but it's not making it. And then, like, what you said about his first wife, I was telling my wife, I said, I'm not trying to be judgmental. I said, but let's just look at it, the 2020 vision, and we on the outside looking in. I said, but why is it that his oldest son from the first marriage is not confused, but his daughter and son by her is having these issues, gender issues. Mm -hmm. And I know that's another conversation for far another time, but I just remember when his son came out just blurted out, I'm in love with Tyler the Creator. Mm. And it's like, wow. And him and her saying that they're allowing their kids to experience. I was like, wait a minute. You didn't do this with your first son. So who's managing what at the household? Are you the man of your house or what? You know, that might irritate some women. I hope they don't, but who's in charge? Well, obviously, Jade is in charge. And. Um, will probably like most men <clears throat> would rather stand down, excuse me, one second, <clears throat> would rather stand down than have a conflict because I mean, when you get, if as a man, if you get in a conflict with a woman, you're not going to win that. That's not a battle you're going to win. So you can only go so far. I mean, you have the conversation, but when you see that, that things get a little bit heated or escalated, then you just, you just pretty much back down. And um, I don't know if you got a chance to see the one video where Will Smith is in his house and Jada just pulls out a phone and starts recording him and putting him on social media. And he says, you know, I I have a a social media presence. I'm in in my home. I mean, you have to ask me before you just start filming me. And what that video showed was clearly a lack of any respect for Will Smith. And I told my I told my, my wife this. I said, you know, the thing is, Will Smith slept with Jada Pinkett while he was still married to his first wife. He left his first wife for Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett doesn't really have any respect for Will Smith. None. Look how he came into the relationship. So you left your, I mean, he wants to be wholesome and traditional, but you had a traditional family and you broke that up to be with a woman who told you she didn't want to be married. And then, you know, you talk to her mom and her mom goes crying to her. So she feels like she was, um, like she was forced into, to that marriage. So in other words, Jada is, it feels like, like how men who feel like they were trapped and they, they had to get married. That's how Jada feels. So you see in the resentment and, uh, you know, and I just think confirmation bias won't allow him to realize that he made a mistake and just move on. And at this point, even moving on would cost him, cost him a lot of money. And I was thinking that, I was like, you know, when she said that, she had kind of like thought about still getting a divorce, but he didn't want it. That's he's more to do. I'm like, so 
if it's financial as um especially the Oscar now and had he not did what he did I felt he could have rebound in a, a big way with other movies because after winning the Oscars he was already getting what 20 mil per movie he probably would have got more mm. and other deals I felt he could have recouped the money he may have lost in a divorce possibly with her so I guess his, his rationale his thinking I, I'm still baffled on why he still wants to try to force something that's not there yeah I mean he just doesn't want to be wrong I mean, because for him to end that marriage um, would make him realize that he made a mistake leaving his first wife. And again, I think it's confirmation bias. I just, I don't, I don't think he wants to acknowledge that he made a mistake. But clearly, he made a mistake. You think it's something like on the on the on the backside, like from his first wife. Let's say when he did it, she she said something to him like, "You're gonna ruin the day." That you did this thing it's gonna come back on you tenfold. No, no, no. They don't have the, they don't have that type of relationship. Matter of fact, he wouldn't divorce his first wife because he doesn't believe in divorce. See, he believes divorce is a failure, which most men do. Like most men, right? Struggle with divorce is the reason why we don't rush to get married because for us, divorce is um, is failure, and and most men don't like to feel like like failures. So uh, right. Cherie Zampino, she actually divorced him to free him to go be with her. But they're still close, right? I mean, they all used, all of them took trips together as a family. And now uh, Will takes trips with, with his ex-wife, Cherie Zampino, without Jada and without the kids, with Jada's blessing. So that tells you what type of relationship they have there. You wow. know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a unique, um bizarre relationship. And so I mean, you know, Will going off and, and slapping him and I told my wife, I said, Listen, I truly believe that, you know, initially I thought that okay, well maybe he just he lost his cool and there was a lapse in judgment. But I don't believe it was a lapse in judgment. I believe it was premeditated. I believe that he had a conversation with Jada. And she's like, well, what you going to do if he says something? He's like, man, if he say one more thing, I'm going to go up there and slap the shit out of him. And I think that that's the reason why she rolled her eyes and she looked over to Will like, well, okay, you said you were going to do this. And he went up there like a stone cold pimp, slapped him, and he immediately turned around and had a smirk on his face. That's why I believe it was and, it was it was uh, premeditated. And what you said right there, I remember him turning around, had a little smirk on his face. Man, dang! <laughs> wow. Now that's the one that was just behind right there. Yeah. So I mean, I just. Wow. Um, so I, I don't feel sorry for for Will. I, I think this was a, this was a, an actual it was a great example um, of what you shouldn't do in that take hey, that actions have consequences. Uh, there's a there's a there's another YouTuber. He's, he's a cool cool brother. His name is uh, E Black, and and I went on his uh, I went on his live stream, and you know initially E Black. Um, you know, he was a little bit sympathetic towards uh, Will Smith because he had a similar situation where guys were trying to, in order to attack him, they were going after his wife, which I, I personally think is some weak shit to me anyway because she's not out here. She's she's a civilian. She's not a YouTuber. Uh, I think you wife and kids, you, you you leave them off limits, unless the wife jumps into it. You know, you, you they should be off limits. And so, so I, I understood why he was so angry and he was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm with Will Smith. You know, I agree with Will Smith. But I think as, as, as time goes on and you really get a, a chance to reflect, you start to see, well, nah, there's a better way to handle it because this whole situation is going to cost him big. And so one of the examples 
that I gave to E Black as to why um, why this whole situation was wrong and we shouldn't be cheering it is because we had um, we had a, a similar situation in DC, but this was with kids, right? So you had these like you know 15, 16 year old kids. They were they were sophomores in, in high school, and the kids were joining and making fun of each other. And one of the kids who happens to look a lot like my son, um, you know, was Joan and the girl talking about her hair. And so she went back home. I guess she told her boyfriend or some other male friends that she has. And so like the next day they caught the kid walking home from school. And so it was like three of them. And so they jumped him. And then one of the kids um, actually pulled out a knife and stabbed the kid to death. And, you know, so here you have one boy is dead, three boys' lives are ruined, and the girl who went back and lit the, you know, lit the match, ignited the situation, because those other kids didn't have anything to do with it. She brought them in it. I mean, she's she's going to go on. She's not going to get in trouble. She's not going to have a record. She still has her life. Meanwhile, the guys who are, you know, protecting black black women as as they all say you know protect black i feel like there are other ways to protect black women than just getting into fisticuffs over words but um and what i told him i said hey this the the situations are analogous other than the fact that you're dealing with rich millionaires it's all about a male cracking a joke about a, a black female's hair um she gets upset and other men or other males act out um to defend her and in this case, it caused one kid to to lose his life. And so I just didn't feel like this was something that we should be um, applauding. I mean, he could have handled it differently. Um, he could have gone up there and put his, his hand on, on, on Chris's shoulder and whispered in his ear and told him, hey, look, man, you know, my wife has alopecia. Um I don't want to come back up here again. He could have done a number of things. I mean, matter of fact, even if he had, well, he shouldn't have slapped Chris Rock, but even if he slapped Chris Rock, do you know if, if, if Will Smith went and sat down and never started barking, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth, do you know that Chris Rock would have played that slap off? Like he tried to, he tried to joke it off and play it off. Like people didn't really know if it was a skit or, or if it was real. That's how right. Chris Rock played it off. But Will made such a scene of it that everybody realized, like, oh, 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 this is something serious. So it's it's this thing is 100% on Will because cause Chris Rock tried to give him a way out. He tried to laugh it off, like, wow, Will still just laughing the hell out of me. Oh, oh, you know, Chris was a professional. That, he, he was a hell of a professional that night. And he gave Will a, and he, he gave Will a way out and Will didn't take it. He probably would have approached Will after the fact, you know, after and was like, hey, what the, what the hell was that about? But Will Smith had to make, he had to make a scene to show that he was going to defend the honor of his wife. Well, you know, we're about to see the consequences of that. So you defend her. And then when you're at your lowest moment and everything is turning upside down on you, she's distancing herself from you. Boy, right. what a world. What a world, you know? I remember, I remember listening to um, Wanda Sykes, mm -hmm. part of her interview on Ellen's show. I called her another channel, but um, she said when she went to this after party and really saw Chris, she said she was still kind of shaking and distraught from what happened because she explained how she went to a trailer to change clothes, and by the time she was coming back, she said she, she said we introduced Chris, and I ran back to my trailer to change clothes. But time coming back, it's like just kind of like silence. I'm like, what's wrong? And they told me what happened. She said, I didn't, I didn't see the smack. Said, but then I heard about it. And she said, when she got to the party, came in, Chris seen her, and came up there apologizing to her. And she said, why are you apologizing to me? She said, because this is you, Regina, and the other chick tonight. Y'all doing such a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. And now the only thing everybody can talk about is what just happened between me and Will. She said, I want to apologize. But she said, to me, that shows you how much you care about everybody else. She doesn't, and I was like, damn. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was um it was uh it it was it was rough, man. It's a hard lesson. Um I do believe there's going to be a lawsuit and um uh, I think the um the Smiths are radioactive now. I don't I don't think too many people are going to touch them. I don't well, think see, I was wondering because he has projects in the pipe right now that he's probably working on. Mm-hmm. Whereas with her, the only thing I think they mentioned that they was going to work on was that movie with um Will Packard that they had did um before where the girls not out with uh, Regina Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, Girl, like yeah, so. girls night, something like that. Yeah, you're right. So that's the only project I knew. Now see Will uh, Will Packard still work with her, whereas Will, his stuff normally, you know, it, it's a money maker. So I, I do wonder, or, or is this going to be something that these um, studios want to say, you know what, let's see if we recast somebody else until this stuff blows over. Or do they sit there and pull the project back? Pull projects back? Because to me, I would think that when a studio knows they have something in the pipeline and it's budgeted and they already don't negotiate this, if they still want to push, they say, "Look, here, I don't want to wait this long for this to come out. I want they're gonna go ahead and find somebody else to recast, and then it has to be someone that can have this appeal." Yeah, yeah. So, um, this thing is uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm trying to what's her name? Tandy Way. I don't know if you. What's the guy? I'm trying to find out the the guy's name. I don't want to butcher his name. The guy that was in Magic Mike. Um, so Tandy Way and Channing Tatum. Yeah, Channing Tatum. I, I I couldn't. I don't know why. I was about to call him Tyson Tatum. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Channing Tatum. So they actually got into a huge uh, argument on set uh, over the the whole Will Smith incident. And I don't think uh, Channing Tatum. I don't think he. I don't think he's that supportive of, of Will going up there and hitting somebody over words. And um, so, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm speculating uh, as to what was said. Cause I mean, they didn't really, they, the only thing that the articles mentioned is that they, they got into it and he jumped in his car and sped off and he's the producer and he probably told him, Hey, if she's on it, I'm off, I'm off it. So she, they, she was asked to leave the project. So she's no longer going to be a part of uh Magic Mike, they're bringing in Selma Hayek. But oh, you talking about um Tandy Newton? Yeah, Tandy, yeah, yeah. Tandy Way, Tandy Way Newton, and uh, and she uh and, and all of this was over um <laughs> over the Will Smith um debacle, and you know Tandy Way Newton, she's having some issues in her life where she's getting divorced. You know, I mean, well, her husband is is leaving her, so she's she's having a nervous breakdown and. She probably, my assumption is that she supports, um, she supports, uh, what's her name, Jada Pinkett. I, I, I have a hard time believing that uh, Channing Tatum is supporting <laughs> Jada in this, in this this whole thing. And so um, a number of, of on, at least online or social media, a number of, of black women were supportive of uh, Jada Pinkett. And... Um, mm-hmm. You know, they were like, oh, yeah, Will, this is how you support, you know, black women. I'm like, no. See, and that's how you know that a lot of these women were either single or, you know, you, you, you look at their mindset. It didn't really make much sense because a married woman, if she loves her husband, is not going to allow him to jeopardize his well-being and the well-being of their family over something that can, you know, she'll she'll probably grab and be like, let's go. How many times have you seen a woman stop her husband or boyfriend from getting to a fight? You know, that's how you can tell who who loves their husband. Like a woman who will sit back and be like, yeah, baby, get him, get him. Because as soon as this dude goes to jail, you're going to be sleeping with his friends or sleeping with somebody else talking about, I I, I can't, you know, I can't sit sit around and, and wait for you for two years, but you instigated the situation and you were encouraging him to go out there and engage in fisticuffs or if he, he dies, then what, you know? Um, so I, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, the, the whole thing I thought was, um, 
was 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 pretty absurd. But to your larger point, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of things that we could have been talking about that um, that that we didn't, you know. And and, and it, uh, soon m- maybe on um, maybe we'll have like a stream where we have everybody up where we'll talk about. Uh, this global reset and how it's going to affect us as people, especially us as black people and black couples. I've been telling folks for the past year, man, get you some rice and beans. <laughs> you know, you need to get you, you know, get, get hey, you a bag, hey. a bag, a bag of, get you some big bags of rice, put it in the garage and, and stock up on some beans. Cause you'll never go wrong with rice and beans. Exactly. You know, my wife had that conversation. I said, we could start stocking up on rice and beans. I said, we can soak the beans in blood. I said, and the thing about it is, I said, the only major thing that I wish I had um, invested in a little more was something that could collect rainwater and to go through whatever the osmosis of making it drinkable. I said, that's the only thing. And then she said, what about cooking? I said, well, we can cook with wood. I said, but um, man, mm-hmm. I said, because everything points to them keep emphasizing the supply chain. But um, I mean, that's another conversation for another time. But um, what you said, again, makes perfect sense. And it's very sound and logical because of the fact that if she's not willing to really put her heart and soul into it, then to me it's like a lost cause. No matter what he keeps on trying to do to make things seem more manageable, He's doing all the heavy lifting, and it's not going to work. I learned that a long time ago because um, I've been married and divorced. So you, you go through that when the other party's not doing their part, you're going to separate. Mm-hmm. My father said, cut your losses, move forward. Learn from your mistakes. Make the necessary adjustments. If you were wrong, it didn't even matter. You make those adjustments, and you move forward. So that helps you be a stronger, better man for your next life. If you so desire. So, um, when you said about what Will did, I mean, I never put that in perspective like that, but yeah, you know, you had that and you chose to go this route to someone who really didn't really want to be you. Man, that's putting it where, as Joe Madden says, where the goats get it. Is the reason why it's hard for me to feel sorry for Will. I can't feel sorry for Will. I know a lot of people like, man, I feel bad for Will. I don't. Because he had a wife and he, he had a son. I mean, how many how many men are married and they leave their wife and their son? I mean, leave their wife and kid, but especially when you got a little mini you, a miniature you. Right. You see? And, but, I mean, the, the explanation, the only explanation is that, the, the, you know, Will has a, has a lot of, he has a lot of trauma in his, his life. And um, I know, you know, Stan and I and, 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 and the panel, we got something, um, well, I got something something cooking up where we talk about, um, we talk about trauma and, and our attachment styles and how they inform our decisions with who we get with when we get older. Because there's a lot more to this uh, issue as, as to why so many relationships fail is more than just infidelity. A lot of it has to do with communication, but, but then there's, there's other aspects and other components that, that influence why we communicate with each other the way we do. And I think that's something that we need to peel the layers back because we are slowly finding ourselves in a situation where Um, married people are slowly becoming a minority and you're not going to have many people that are getting married. I know a lot of women want to get married and there's a difference between wanting to get married and wanting to be in a successful marriage, right? Like, cause you know, women by and large, uh, initiate divorces that by 70% and upwards to 80% in some studies, they initiate the divorce. And a lot of times they do that because, you know, there's no serious consequence. I mean, for women, if you, you divorce 90, was it 90%? I don't think it's 90%, but 
but it's somewhere around there, close to 90% of the time women will receive custody of the kids. And when a woman receives right. custody of the kids, she has an incredible amount of power, and which is what a lot of women crave anyway, is that they want power and to be able to influence and make you do what they want you to do. And, um, right. uh, you know, and they get, uh, you know, uh, was it uh, child support? And if they can't afford that, then they, they get um, public assistance. You don't have too many men that can get on public assistance. Right. You don't have too many men that will receive child support. Uh, I think um, the numbers are mothers who are custodial mothers, 79% of them receive child support from the father. Like 21%, they don't, they don't get anything because the fathers are not paying. So when we talk about all these deadbeat dads, roughly 80% of the fathers are paying child support. Um, now, the opposite is true when it comes to women. Uh, when it comes to women... What was it? I think it's less than 30% of fathers, custodial fathers are receiving um, child support from the mothers. And I think like 49% of mothers are in default when it comes to, uh, to uh, child support. I, I, I mean, I'll share an example. My brother-in-law, he, he had his kid, he got his kid when, when his kid, became a teenager like 13 or 14 and he still had to pay child support to, the, to, to his son graduated from high school even though he had his son that whole period you know boy but, but that's but that's that's the game that's this is this is what men put up with you know this is what we have to deal with and it just seems like when when you know, there's two sides of every story, and, and I'm, I'm I'm not going to diminish that women go through a lot of hardships because they they do, and and they have to put up with a lot of BS. But but men have to put up with a lot of BS too. The thing is, right. when when women air out their grievances, they receive a sympathetic ear. When men air out their grievances, nobody feels sorry for you. Nobody wants to hear it. It's one of the reasons why men struggle with divorce. Like when, when women get divorced, there's a support system in place for them. When men get in a divorce, there is no support system. That's why you have men who fall into depression and sometimes actually even uh, terminate life, you know, self terminate, right? Because there is no support system. So, you know, part of what, you know, stand, and I and, 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 and the rest of the panel, what we, what we want to do is, uh, well, especially me, what I want to do is talk about uh, things from a more balanced perspective because it seems like we only get the female side of the story and men are always shut down. But there, there is two sides of the story. I mean, when you look at most media publications or at least black media publications, they're all they're predominantly geared towards uh, women. Whether it's ebony, whether it's jet, whether it's shade room, grill, it doesn't matter. They they're mainly geared towards women, and uh, I think as a consequence, we don't really get a chance to to tell our side of the story and air out our grievances. And I think that that's something that um, more of us need to do. And I think that YouTube and other social media platforms gives us that opportunity to do so. You know, I agree with you, and especially on a panel. Uh, we have a select number of brothers who have experienced the travesty of going through a divorce and dealing with a court system that in some ways, and if you want to word it from my perspective, done us wrong. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree. And that is something that would probably bring out a, a huge discussion. That'll be an attention go get it. <laughs> getting people involved to discuss that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we definitely, man, I, well, one, I, I'm going uh, to probably end this um, recording, and, and, uh, but uh, definitely appreciate um, uh, the call and uh, rapping with you, and we definitely have to do it again. But ho hold on one second. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and end this.